Hello, my dear children. A warm welcome to you all. Again, um, Business and Accounting Studies, Lesson 2, Second Session. Um, as you can remember, we were talking about business environments. Yeah? Business environments. We discussed about two main environments which are related to businesses. And in the internal environment, that is the first environment, I, of course, I referred to your environment that you have at home. I referred to the home environment, the household environment. Maybe you remember, right? The environment which exists within your house, at your household. And the main parties in the internal environment. Am I showing the right number? Four factors in the internal environment? No, you must remember internal environment has only three factors, three main factors, right? They are closely related. I told you the relationship is close in between them. Let's name the three factors in the internal environment. Right, internal environment, internal environment inside the business organization, the, the environment which exists inside the business organization. What are the main factors, main factors or main forces, parties? I always use the word people. You know, that's, that's the easy word, people. Remember, three main people. We have entrepreneurs. Yeah? Do you remember I cut that word off previous time in the previous session? So, why did I cut it off? Why do you think? I did this in the last session. I cut off the word entrepreneurs. Yeah, the reason is children, because the reason, because every owner, every person who starts a business does not become an entrepreneur, right? Does not become an entrepreneur. Hmm. Do you remember we discussed about factors of production in the previous lesson? Lesson number one, we talked about factors of production. How many factors were there? Yes, I, I know that you remember. How many factors were there? One, two, how many factors of production? Three or four? Yes, children, there are four factors of production. Four. You must remember these things. These things have always come in the papers, in the examination. Factors of production. So, remember, important stuff. Four factors of production, children. What is the first one? Land, that's right, land. Land does not mean the piece of land which the production or the factory is on. Land does not mean only that, that piece of land. Land means all the natural resources. All the natural resources like soil, like granite and extracted from the land like carbide, gems, jewelries are made from gems, gems, right? All the resources which are taken from the natural environment, trees, soil, water, right? Crops, 
all the natural resources go under land. Right, so second factor of production, labor, that's right, labor, labor. Laborers are the people who are working or employees who are working in your business, in the production process, the people who are involved, labor. Third, capital, all the man-made resources which are invested into a production process. Man-made resources. Three, first three factors of production. The one I wanted to extract here is the fourth one. One, two, three, four. What is the fourth one, children? Factor of production last. That's right, entrepreneurship. The word which was here. The reason I cut it off is the reason is all owners do not become entrepreneurs. All owners do not become entrepreneurs. Any person who starts a business does not become an entrepreneur. Right? Entrepreneurs are the innovators, the people who bring new business ideas and takes the risk of starting the business and carries out the business to a successful ending or leads the business to success. Those are entrepreneurs. All owners, all business starters are not considered as entrepreneurs, children. Remember, owners, managers and employees, the three factors or forces in the internal environment. We have discussed these things. Right, so we are going to the external environment, the outer world. First factor in the external environment, customers, competitors. Yeah, I gave you a fun activity. Remember you chose, you selected the competitors of some businesses? Yeah, that was one. So customers, competitors in the external environment, who else? Suppliers were there. I just wrote it by hand. Suppliers were there. And except the three main external environmental factors, we talked about political and legal factors, political and legal forces, and then technological forces, the impact of technology to any business in the world. Right, when I was ending the previous session, children, I told you that we have three more forces left in the external environment. That's how we ended, right? Economic and global. Economic and global. Finally, the social factors in the external environment. Voila. Again, a briefing of the previous session or the lesson that gets connected to today's session. Right, we'll move on. Economic environment as a main force which affects businesses in the external environment. Economic environmental forces. Children, what is an economy? What is an economy? Do you know about economics? Remember, I told you in the beginning, this subject has the basics, the foundation in business studies for, for your A-levels, and the basics or the foundation stuff, fundamental stuff in accounting, and a little bit of economics also. 
you might remember the, the, the people, the students who uh, watched the previous sessions might remember a little bit of economics, right? Tiny little bit. Here we, first of all, we talk about economic factors, economy. Children and economy in very basic form, in a very basic definition, I can tell you, an economy is how resources of a country is handled to satisfy the unlimited wants of the population. It's a very basic very basic definition for an economic system. I'll, I'll repeat how the resources of a country are handled, managed, in order to satisfy the unlimited wants of the people. Right? The economy is handled by the government. What is an economy? That question is answered now, right? These uh, definitions about economies are out of the syllabus, out of your scope, but just for your information, just for your knowledge, you can learn this, right? This is business and accounting studies, right? A study of business. So, it doesn't hurt you to have an idea about an economy, right? What is an economy? So, that, children, is the basic, it's a very basic definition of an economy. Moving forward, we learn about factors in the economic environment, right? Let's read out. Economic environment consists of economic factors that affect businesses. Mm. The government of a, of a country is mainly responsible for setting economic policies. Who is responsible of handling the economy? Government children. Government of the country. So government decides what economic policies are to be implemented. All right, let's look at the first factor in the economic environment. First factor, interest rates. The interest rates in a country, the interest rate. Maybe you have heard most probably when you talk about banks or when you go to banks or when your parents or other peers when they talk about loans that they have taken you might have heard this word interest rate interest rate seven percent eight percent, 9.5 percent, 9 just to make you familiar, there are various rates for various facilities, loan facilities, lease facilities, they all have an interest rate accompanied with them. So what is this rate? What is this interest? Hmm? Children, banks and other financial institutions, they offer these facilities like loans and uh, leasing facilities, all the borrowings, borrowings of the people and they charge an interest for those facilities that they provide. They charge an interest from us, right? Interest. Not only that, 
Not only that, for our deposits, they give, they give an interest to us. Like, if we have a shortage of money, if we need money from banks, we borrow, we take loans, we take leasings, you know, there are various facilities. We borrow money and for that facility that they give us, that they provide us, they charge an interest, they take an interest from us. Right? And if we have an excess of money, we don't need money from the banks. We are not going to ask for a loan. We have money, excess money. We can go and deposit that money in a bank. Deposit your money in a bank. You have savings accounts, right? Fixed deposits. Those are deposits. If we deposit our money, the banks give us an interest. Banks give us. Right. I hope you understand. So, interest rate is decided as an economic factor. Economic factor by the central bank mainly. Central bank, you're going to learn these things in the future. So, very, very simply, central bank of Sri Lanka. With the government of the country, the interest rate is decided. It's an economic factor. So here you go, first economic factor, interest rates. How does interest rates, how does this rate affect a business? How does it affect businesses? Children, if you are in a family with a business background, you may understand but I'll explain it to all of you. Businesses must need loan facilities. They, they need these financial facilities from banks. So if the interest rate is high in the country, businesses and the people who are running businesses, they are reluctant to take loans from banks. They don't go and ask for loans. They are discouraged to start new businesses or to expand the existing business. They are, not, they are not really encouraged to keep a step forward, to take the business to the next level by taking a loan. They are not encouraged. They are reluctant. They just refrain from that step, going that step. Because if, we, if they take, they know that if they take a loan, the government, the bank will charge a high interest from them. So it's an expense. It's a high expense for a business. Right? So they are reluctant. They, they just refrain from taking that loan going for that financial facility because the interest rates are very high in the country. So that's how interest rates affect businesses in the country. On the other hand, if the interest rates are low, the businesses can fearlessly take a step forward or the people who are intending to start businesses, they can take loans and they can start businesses. Existing businesses can expand. You know what is expanding? Expand, children. They can start new branches, open a new outlet, yeah, find a new market, hmm? produce more products, produce new products, new, and distribute in the market. You know, a step forward, expansion. A loan can facilitate that. A loan facility can be taken for that. But if the rate is high, no. 
they are reluctant. They don't keep that step forward. That's how interest rates affect businesses. Remember, important things. Second, inflation something that everybody complains about inflation children do you have any idea about this inflation some say it's bad some say it's it should be there but we are not going to go into detail just an introduction to inflation Inflation is the continuous rising or continuous increasing of price levels of goods and services. I'll repeat. Inflation is the continuous rising or continuous increasing of price levels of goods and services. You know the price that we pay for goods keeps on going up. Haven't we experienced that in our country? We have. We have a high inflation. Well, it's relative. Um, <clears throat> so, inflation is the continuous increase in the general price levels of goods and services. Is it good? Well, not very good for the general public. But, if the price levels are increasing for a business, well, even their raw material prices could be increasing. You know, the factors of production, factors of production, the land, labor, capital and entrepreneurship, right? Out of these, the land, the natural resources, they need as raw materials. Uh, they, ask, they have to ask suppliers to supply them. The raw materials that they need and those prices too are increasing labor the money that you should pay the salaries of the employees that work for you those also must increase those also must be increasing right then the businesses are compelled are forced to increase the price of the goods that they sell to cover up the expenses, ever-increasing prices of everything, of the goods and services. That's how children, inflation, affect a business. Alright children, moving on. Here we go, the third factor. Third force a factor in the economic environment, income distribution. Children, you must you must understand. When I explain these things to you, as newcomers, as newly experiencing this subject for the first time, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. Right? So if you are experiencing these, if you have experienced, if you have learned these things, these areas of study, you may know that I'm explaining these things in a very basic, in a very simple manner. Okay? But just for you to understand the things and sufficient for you to answer any question which comes from this content, okay? Income distribution. Children, the income of a country is generated by the people in a country, by what they produce, by what the businesses produce, right? And that income generated by the production of the country must be distributed among the population in a fair manner, right? 
that if that is done there will be no impoverished class you know a, a extremely poor class or extremely rich class in a country if the income distribution is so fair but that is very rare don't you agree a country especially in our country the distribution of income among the public among the general population um, is it very fair well you can think of that right we have an extremely poor population a class an extremely rich class too in our country so there are discretions in the income distribution right discrepancies income distribution it is how the national income of a country has been distributed among the people how the national income of a country has been distributed among the people well if that is becoming fair it's good for the society and even for the businesses they will have more customers coming and buying products because more people have more income right so income distribution there you go very simple explanation into this area is that all no we have one more level of employment if everyone expecting a job receives a suitable job a country will achieve a full employment level unemployment full employment have you seen protests carried out by graduates in our country that's a very very common sight protests carried out by um, graduates and other people the youth asking for jobs they are lifting up boards and signs and they are blocking the streets they are asking for jobs that is because we have a bit of unemployment in the country if a full employment level is achieved i'm talking about this now if a full employment level is achieved everybody in the labor force has a job every person who can work who have the ability to work that is called the labor force in a country have jobs well i don't think we have achieved that level yet our country that's a good sign for a business that's how uh if the employment level is very high unemployment is low that's a good sign for a business it 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 has a positive effect because businesses can find and generate jobs find people good people suitable people for employment for their employment uh, opportunities businesses can find uh, candidates people for their vacancies and that generates more job opportunities okay so children economic factors all right um just to relate to this context here remember we talked about objectives of a business do you remember I always give this sign when we talk about objectives hmm? what the businesses need to achieve the targets of a business can you remember there was a sub objective related to this can you generating employment opportunities was a sub objective so it's an economic factor in the economic environment so one factor which 
influence or affect businesses in the economic environment hmm? is employment level in the country level of employment shall we moving on there are more international relations international relations foreign trade is depending on international relations of the government of the economy let's read out international relations are the relationships existing between countries right these relationships are built up through trade zones and trade agreements international relations are the relationships existing between countries countries have internationally countries have relationships trade relationships children they trade right so it's a good sign if the international relationships are strong for a country it's a good sign for the businesses of that country i repeat if the international relations are strong in a country it's a good sign for the businesses of the country they can get involved in international business international trade they can import and export yeah next we have foreign exchange rates it is the rate at which the currency of one country is exchanged with the currency of another country it is the rate at which the currency of one country is exchanged with another country's currency currencies what are currencies the unit of money that we use money rupees in our country it is rupees in other countries they have different units in usa it's dollars in uk england it's pounds and euros in England in Australia it's Australian dollars in um, likewise in Thailand it's baht um, different countries have different currencies at which rate does your currency exchange hmm, with the currency of another country is is the currency of our country is it having a high exchange value we have a high exchange rate when we exchange a rupee with a dollar well you know you should know our currency exchange rate rupee value is going down 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 it has been going down a little bit lately right how much is one rupee in exchange for a dollar so how much is one dollar one US dollar in rupees well it went over 200 right one US dollar for one US dollar we must pay over 200 rupees today it was 199 or close to that it was it, it is close to 200 so that is the exchange rate of the currency unit of our country exchange rate of rupee um if you search in the internet like maybe one year ago one US dollar was exchanged for 180 even below 180 rupees which meant uh, like we have to pay only 180 or less for a dollar now it's mm, 200 so rupee value is going down 
it's 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 both ways dollar value is going up or rupee value is going down it's not good for our country if our currency rate is going down 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 so for a business the exports that they the production that they have and the the goods that they export earns dollars to our country right for a business the production the production that they produce that they make when it is exported to another country we get a dollar income we sell our goods to another country a business is producing and exporting and it earns us dollars so currency rate affects that currency rate is directly affecting the dollar income that we get when we get dollars to our country it's good it's good for the country's income but the bad the the negative the the the, the worst side worst is that we spend more to import we have to spend more dollars to import or to buy goods from other countries and to bring them to our country we spend more for imports to bring in import goods from other countries hmm? just check uh, the the equipment that you are having right now at at your desk the laptop the phone just check the phone check the back of the phone is it made in sri lanka no most probably if you check could be made in china yeah even your the clothes you are wearing even the the household items that you are having go to the kitchen the the blender the 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 microwave come to the living room the tv the lcd the home theaters the, all these goods that we use most of these goods that we use are imported made in another country so our money our currency the results imports importing goods from other countries it results in money outflow money going out from our country so the worst part is exchange rate effects imports and exports and imports and exports effects exchange rate okay was that too deep for you was that too complex <laughs> yes um just remember exchange rate directly affects businesses especially uh, businesses which are involved in production and exporting uh, and businesses which are involved in importing import and export businesses savings savings is the pro proportion of the income that individuals keep without spending on consumption we have savings everybody we have savings in banks just like i explained before we have deposits money which are secured in our banks don't we don't you have savings accounts you have higher the savings of a country the higher will be the amount of funds available for investment more money saved more is available to invest to start businesses right so good for businesses the savings of the country should be high savings should be high all right there you go children the ending of the economic environmental factors and the discussion about economic environment well 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 what do we have here global environment global environment globalization 
globalization. Mm, you have heard this, right? Globalization, it's, it's, it's discussed everywhere. What is globalization? Children, globalization means the boundaries or the barriers are all removed and countries trade with each other, businesses trade with each other without no barriers. Right? The entire globe, our world, has become one village. It's called a global village concept. Aren't you experiencing this? You are. Don't you talk to your friends, your cousins, your aunties, uncles who are abroad. Don't you connect with them in a minute. Of course, you just log on to Skype or just go to WhatsApp, take a call, WhatsApp call. Or you just um, go to Skype, take a Skype call if you want to send a, a in detail letter or a document or something official, you just email it. Ding, it goes to USA. Ding, it goes to Africa, South Africa. And ding, ding, something comes from Australia. In a matter of seconds, you connect without any barriers with other countries in the world, with all the countries are connected, interconnected with each other without no barriers, thanks to information and communication technology. So the entire globe, the, the entire world has become one village. Just like you're talking to your neighbor, just like you're talking to a person who is passing through, you are, you are talking to a person a foreigner in a distant country, just like he's in front of you. He's in front of you, but he's thousands of miles away. You can get involved, get involved with different, different tasks and things. Businesses, businesses can expand to international level, right? Just like we discussed earlier in economic factors, imports and exports are made easy now because there are no barriers in trading. The entire globe has become one village, that is globalization. If you get a question in your exam paper, um, if you get this question, how are you gonna answer? What is globalization? Well, as I said, as I explained to you before, no restrictions, no barriers among countries and they, they are all interconnected uh, for trade and for economic reasons and as social and cultural uh, levels, social and cultural ways, they're all interconnected. So we can give this definition for globalization. The mutual relationship among countries where no barriers exist in terms of economic and social cultural
ways. There you go. The mutual relationship among countries where no barriers exist, no barriers. All countries can interconnect with each other. Um, in terms of economic and social and cultural ways. If that is too long for you, just give this answer. No barriers exist among countries and they are connected can you see as one global village choose either one up to you globalization the important thing children is taking these ideas to your mind the understanding of these concepts that is the important thing Okay, why is it important for our business? The globalization, the global environment, why is it important for a business? Let's find out. Businesses have these positive impacts and these negative impacts. Hmm. Let's look at the picture. Positive impacts. Can you see the word impact? What is here? Resources, opportunities, plans, analysis, data, information, customers. A lot of positive impacts. A lot of positives, children. Remember children, businesses can interconnect with other businesses in other countries and they can use their products, foreign products, foreign raw materials, quality raw materials in our country to bring them, to import them to our country for their production, for the business products. The business can import quality raw materials at a cheaper price from a foreign country, right? So, can obtain quality raw materials, right? What else? the most fun, interesting thing we learned in the previous session. In the external environment, we learned about technological forces. Can you remember? Technology, children. High-end technology. Advanced technology. Can be brought to our country through these relationships global relationships right technology and by bringing the technology the latest technology and by taking the high quality materials from countries at a cheaper price businesses can produce whatever they produce and sell again to those other countries that means to export the products that is also one major major advantage of globalization 
global connections. Yes, example, we have a business. Let's say we are producing dehydrated fruit products. Let's say packeted dehydrated pineapple, tamarind. Have you seen these products? They have a high demand in the international market. High demand in the international market. Hmm? Or let's take something very simple or something very common. Tea. We can bring in latest technology machineries to produce tea in our factories. Machineries which produce high capacity of output or a lot of a higher uh, production higher uh, amount of kilograms or tons of tea which is in a higher quality that tea which is produced by this new machine is higher in quality right so see how technology positively impacted a business and that tea can be packeted now, in an attractive packaging, like a branded packaging, and we can export the tea again to an international destination. Right? Can find new markets or foreign markets for your products. Can you come up with a positive impact or a positive thing, a positive effect of globalization. Think. I'll give you the opportunity here. Think of one more thing. Mm -hmm. Children, new advanced strategies, production methods, New ideas which the other countries, which in, 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 in developed countries, new ideas that they use. We can bring them here to our country and help our production or businesses. Right? So resources, raw materials means resources. Hmm? Technology to find new markets and to export our products to foreign countries. Many, many positives are there. But sad thing is there are negatives. See this? Do you see how the entire globe is run by a set of wealthy? Well, you see the image, right? The image speaks. Yeah, it speaks. The globe, the entire world is run. It is run by a set of wealthy businessmen. Huh? And they step on poor countries. <laughs> they step on poor countries. And do you see how these little, uh, you know, unnoticeable crowd, how they hang on to these small underdeveloped countries in the below part. They hang on and some people just, they get blown away. Negative impacts children negative impacts of globalization 
just like positives, there are negatives. Well, it's, it's the same in everything. There are pros and cons. There are advantages, disadvantages. Yeah, advantages, disadvantages. Likewise, let's talk about the negative impacts. Okay, just like the picture shows you, children, there are multinational businesses, multinational businesses which are spread all over the world multinational businesses, companies which are spread in each and every country, every country of the world, right? They dominate their trade. They dominate the industries that they are in. So if with this globalization, if these type of companies step into our developing countries, small countries such as Sri Lanka, they can dominate the market. They can dominate the market. The competition is unbearable for our smaller businesses, local businesses. So, competitive disadvantage. There's a competitive disadvantage, or we can say high competition. High competition. Just to make it simpler for you. To remember high competition big disadvantage high competition means our small businesses local businesses cannot cope up they cannot cope up they tend to collapse because these are very powerful international businesses they come to our country they set up their business um, <coughs> businesses in our country hiring our people hiring local uh, people uh, employees as they are employees and managers are also taken from the local crowd most of the time and they lead these businesses to be very successful and capture the entire market right so domestic businesses May, may what? Domestic businesses may collapse. Collapse, you know. They can't cope up. What other negative impacts uh, does global globalization have? What about our cultural, social values? You know, children, we are country. Our country is a country with a very rich cultural background. Very long history. There are traditions, beliefs, you know, unique to our country. These can be affected with these foreign arrivals, right? Because of globalization, these international trends, they come to our country, fashions, you know, products, practices, they damage sometimes. The social and cultural impact social and cultural impact
could be negative. Okay, and local skilled workers are a human resource can migrate to other countries. Local skilled and the, the, the intelligence so that this, the spirit of the labor force. Remember when we talked about labor, when we talked about labor uh, as an internal environmental factor, internal environmental factor, we discussed about three main factors or forces. Owners, managers, employees. When we talked about employees, I said the employees are mainly two categories. There are two categories. The employees or workers who provide their physical, the physical labor. And the other part, other category is mental, their mental efforts. So that portion of the labor force, the intelligence, they could migrate to other countries. That's a loss for our country. Local skilled labor could migrate. As a result of globalization, the entire globe becoming one village with the connections. Thanks to what? Globalization was as a result of what? It came like came so rapidly thanks to information and communication technology, ICT. So there you go, children. The impact of globalization, the global environment on businesses. Positive impacts, positive, negative impacts, both are clearly discussed. I hope you understood all these areas that we discussed. Moving on. Children, the last part of your chapter two, lesson number two, the last part. What is this unfamiliar word? The word which is in caps, capital letters. Does it make any sense to you? SWOT. How do you pronounce it? SWOT. SWOT. SWOT analysis. Some say analysis, some say analysis. It's okay. SWOT analysis. Right. Let's see. S stands for strengths. Do you have strengths? Everybody has strengths. They are unique to individuals. The W stands for weaknesses. O stands for opportunities and T stands for threats. Right. I'm just keeping the first letters so you can see them clearly. The first letters form the word SWAT. S is the uh, first word that is strengths, right? Where can you see strengths here? Strengths. Can you see strengths? Strengths. W stands for weaknesses.
weaknesses. Children, there's a, there's a reason, a good reason why I included this picture image for you. That reason is, children, strengths are the positive side or the positive factors in the internal environment. Okay? Internal origin. Strengths are the positives, your strong points inside the business. Makes sense, right? Weaknesses are the negatives, the flops, which are inside your business, in the internal environment. So, both strengths and weaknesses exist in the internal environment. Okay, strengths and weaknesses both in the internal environment. Okay, now let's see what opportunities and threats are. Opportunities and threats. Opportunities. Where can you see opportunities? Where, 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 where? Here. Opportunities. Opportunities and threats. Opportunities are, as you already guessed, opportunities are the positive ones, the good ones and threats are the bad ones and they exist in the external environment external remember children important very important because past papers past examinations have frequently asked questions from this area from this particular area that we are discussing. If you want to get an A for business and accounting studies and kickstart your A levels in your commerce stream, if you are hoping uh, to select commerce for A levels, remember an area which is very important. Strengths, weaknesses are in the internal environment inside the business. Opportunities and threats are in the external environment, external to the business or outside the business. Positives and negatives, outside. Here we go. Strengths, children, strengths. Strengths. What are the parties in the internal environment? Are there five? No, there are three main parties in the internal environment. I'm always testing your knowledge and testing your memory, okay? What are the three parties in the internal environment? That's right, owners. Second, managers, yeah. Employees, you're correct. Employees. The strengths of these three parties are the strengths of any business. Strengths of these three parties. So, availability of adequate capital, sufficient, enough capital, should be there. Who's investing capital, children? Who's investing? Owners are investing. The capital. So if owners have invested a good capital, it's good for the business. Good for the business. Yeah. 
the business will have enough things, enough money to invest in the resources that the business need. A good capital is a good strength. You know, I'm showing this because these are strengths. Yeah. Second, experience of managers. Good, experienced, skilled, educated managers. That's a strength for any business. See, there are businesses which move forward, which always um, introduces new things, puts uh, new products to the market. They introduce, uh, they launch new products in the market and uh, they, they tap into other fields also. Uh, they start new outlets, they start, they open new branches, they, they progress day by day. Maybe that's because of a good set of managers hmm? and specialized, specialized knowledge and dedication of employees. If employees are dedicated to your business, like we discussed earlier, hmm? the employees are a very important factor in the internal environment. If they are dedicated, if they are skilled, huh? if they have good attitudes, if they are committed to their work, they're doing their jobs perfectly, that means the business operations will run smoothly. Hmm? The employees must be dedicated and committed. Strength, children, strength. Specialized production methods, unique products, strength. Having recognized brand name, strength. Okay, okay, these are the strengths. These bring good vibes to the business, good, um, positive things. They help in progress, they help to succeed. And these, all, all these strengths are in the internal environment. Owners, managers, employees, and production and brand name and all internal factors. Right. Let's move on to weaknesses. Things that we don't like to have. Huh? We don't like. Things that should not be there. Weaknesses. Is there a connection between strengths and weaknesses? Can you see a connection, children? Yeah. Yeah, you are right. The opposite of strengths become weaknesses. Did you get it? The opposite of strengths become weaknesses opposite right we just turn it around and that's a weakness see limited financial capability or less capital more capital less capital turn it around Turn the strength around, and that's a weakness. Mm -hmm. Specialized knowledge and dedication of employees. Scarcity of trained employees. Scarcity of trained employees. Lack of knowledge. and skill, lack of knowledge and skill, like simply saying the employees do not know how to carry out the business activities, they don't know the production process, they don't know how to produce, they don't know the, they don't know the methods, 
how can the business run? The products will be faulty if the employees do not know how to operate the machines, how to do the work, how to carry out the production. They don't have the necessary skill to do whatever needed. So the, the products which come out of the business will be high in quality or low in quality. Low in quality, they will be faulty. So lack of knowledge and skill of employees. Opposite of this, specialized knowledge is a strength. Lack of knowledge is a weakness. It's a flop. Knowledge about new technology is not been updated. Not adopting new technology. Sticking to the same old routine manual production methods. Less products can be produced and the products also not very high quality. You know how the books that you use today, the books, the CR books, the notebooks, the paper quality is very, very good. The, the papers are very smooth and the cover page is very colorful, right? You know, back in the day, the, the books that we used, they did not have a color, a, a colored cover page. They just had like a hard board cover page, right? And the paper, the paper that we had to write on, the paper was rough. See the books which are produced today? Uh, the papers are very smooth very colorful cover pages and on the back of the cover page, the backside, there are very resourceful information. So high quality products because of high quality technology, advanced technology. Those products are advantages for any business. So if technology, production methods and technology is used, that's a strength if lack of uh, low tech, like no technology is used, the technologies are not updated, that's a weakness. Business is going down. Finally, negative attitudes of workers again relates to this trained workers, lack of trained workers and their commitment is low and they are lethargic, they are lazy, they are, not, they are not working. How can a business succeed? It's a weakness. It's a weakness. Geographical location of the business is unfavorable. The location is not good. Hmm? Hmm. Example, I'll give you a very simple example to explain this. You start a very high-end salon, a lady goes and starts, opens up a salon which is like very high-end, offering uh, services such as, you know what these salons offer, uh, hair treatments, hair dressing and all. This salon is open somewhere in, uh, in a very rural area. Like, uh, let's say, you open up a salon in, where, a Dambana? <laughs> Is that a good location for that type of a business? No, that's a weakness, right? No, 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 nobody, no customers will be there, right? So, just a fun example for you. Uh, weaknesses, right? Children at least remember three, at least. And weaknesses, three, right? Just remember the strengths and you can turn the strengths around. The opposite of strengths are weaknesses. Final part, children opportunities and threats. Remember, design the external environment. Hmm? External.
okay um, earlier these strengths and weaknesses are internal opportunities and threats external in the outer world what opportunities do we have here changes in the lifestyle of consumers opportunity you know the consumers or the community um, their lifestyles change their incomes uh, rise and they they start to use cars and they uh, start to build up houses luxury houses mansions and the community is developing that's a good opportunity for a business hardware stores hmm? so various types of businesses will have more customers coming in and you know spending money changes in the lifestyle is an opportunity introducing low interest loans we talked about this you can't say no we talked about this we talked about interest rates yes tell me you remember right tell me you remember you remember we talked about interest rates if the interest rates are low businesses are encouraged to take loans yes so low interest loans means if the interest rate is low uh, businesses they, they are encouraged to take loans from a bank they are not afraid to go to a bank and ask for a loan mm -hmm. or a leasing facility various types of uh, borrowing they can take a loan open up a business and carry on with the business it's positive if the low interest rates are available in a country so opportunity of course it's an opportunity tax incentives taxes are a headache for some people especially for businessmen isn't it it's true we have to pay taxes to the government some people consider it uh, as a burden but it's 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 beneficial for the general public children you're going to learn in the future the tax income is the main income of the government we have to pay taxes don't avoid so if tax incentives are given that means taxes are waived off the government or the local uh, authorities say oh your business your trade or in your industry uh, we have given a tax incentive it's waived off you don't have to pay taxes well that's good tax incentives good positive and these come from the outer world remember external okay designing new cities infrastructure 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 highways byways roads and uh, uh, electricity water um, and other infrastructure facilities airports harbors more facilities provided by the government good for a business good for a business so infrastructure facilities designing new cities like the port city what is going on uh, in the gold phase area when you go passing the gold phase you see an immensely large huge project going on in the middle of the sea not like in the middle of the sea but you know beyond the beach right as a huge project going on right that's building a new city it's like a new city so it's good for a business you know if you can um, invest some capital get together and form a business with a few people few you become an entrepreneur huh 
you have you will find a lot of opportunities in that new city it's true so infrastructure facilities yes good positive trend for a business in the external world external outside world finally children threats threats well let's take the most simple ones natural disasters you have formed a business you are running your business successfully everything is fine and suddenly a tsunami hits your area that's the end of it it's a threat a flood comes washes away all your resources the factory is under water threat from the outer world external environment new competitors remember we talked about globalization globalization high competition comes from the external world but it's negative so remember globalization in the globalization we we talked uh, we discussed that competition is high competition is bad and again it comes here as a negative factor a threat in the external environment high competition new competitors entering the market then natural disasters we talked about that imposition of international trade embargo bans or limitations to trade foreign trade government is imposing obstacles bans you cannot export this product the government is saying we have to bid adhere to the rules legal controls can you remember going back again in the legal environment hmm? we talked about legal controls controlling the businesses by the government and the legal framework so if they impose restrictions to import and to export that's a negative impact no new technologies are adopted hmm? we don't use technology you will not last long because there are new businesses coming into the market coming into the industry who uses new advanced technology if you don't use if you don't take technology into your business you're not going to run for long it's a threat children it's a threat so there you go opportunities and threats external environment with that we move back to the very beginning children today we talked about um, business environments in business environments external environmental factors we talked about two factors external environment economic forces and global environmental forces and we very naively learned something very interesting the swot analysis business has to ad adapt to this changing environmental forces move ahead with changing environmental forces so they must do a swot analysis they must analyze strengths what are the strengths they have what are the weaknesses they have and 
what opportunities they can look for and what threats they can avoid. SW, strengths, weaknesses in the internal. OT, opportunities, threats in the external. I hope you had a good time with me, children. The second session of second lesson, chapter two, ends today. Thank you very much. I hope to meet you with the next session in future.